Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is December 17th, and given the Wednesdays coming up, I think this might be the last uh, Teachers Teaching Teachers of 2014. Um, and we have invited oh, a group of students, um, a, a group from Michigan, uh, one or two from New York City, uh, somebody from Salt Lake City who may still be joining us, and a group from Chicago as well. And so students are joining us as we speak, I hope. Um, and if you hear us and think, oh, I'm supposed to be on that, jo join us. Uh, you can you can find the link to join us at edtechtalk.com slash ttt, which is always true. We leave this open so people can jump right in um, whenever they'd like to. Oh, no, we lost Deja. Should we wait for her to come back? We'll see. Um, in, I'm getting... in the meantime, what? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm getting a message from Ariana, and she's asking me, mm -hmm. are you in? So she's trying to get in. I don't know why. Okay. I didn't get an invite. So the best way to do it at this point is to go to edtechtalk.com slash ttt. Mm, I was really careful with all the emails and everything. I promise. <laughs> hey, uh, oh, here she comes. Here's Ariana. All right. Hey! I recognize that picture. <laughs> she was in the last one. Deja, welcome back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so so let's, uh, let's introduce the people who, he, who are here now, and then we'll, uh, we'll see as other people come um, how this goes. So tonight's topic um, is, uh, well, we, we've invited you kind of vaguely, but uh, to talk about... Um, issues around Ferguson, issues around um, all the things that have been blowing up ever since Michael um, Brown's killing, um, and the Eric Garner's um, non-indictment and, and the other kinds of things that have been happening around. Um, and, and I think the movement has been collected together around this notion of Black Lives Matter. Um, but you guys can can kind of help us define how you see the movement, how you see what's going on. We really wanted to hear from youth, from young people, about um, how you're perceiving all of this. Um, let's start with the introductions, though. Um, Kendra, do you want to start off? Yeah. Um, Welcome. So I'm Kendra. I'm from Okemos, Michigan, and I'm a sophomore. Cool. Describe Okemos a little bit for us. Okemos, great yeah. school system. <laughs> it's got great fine arts. Um, mm -hmm, small town, sort of. So it's pretty great. I love it. So been here all my life. Okay, cool. DJ. Uh, yeah, uh, my name is DJ. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I go to Alcott College Prep, and I'm a senior. Great. Very cool. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Hold on one second. I'm just checking a setting here. No? Okay, we're good. And Ariana is trying to join us. Ariana, can you hear us? No, not yet. Okay. And Don Reed is with us. Don, welcome. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Don has been helping us uh, gather students, and uh, you're helping in the background right now, too, I think. Which yep. is great. Try Do you want to introduce yourself? You. Though? <laughs> Oop, did we lose Don? This isn't great tonight. Okay. DJ. Sure. I, I teach. So Ariana and Kendra are my students. And. <clears throat> and you seem to have frozen. Okay. Ariana is trying again. Okay, we're gonna keep going. DJ, um, do you wanna do? Hi, do you wanna de describe um, a little bit about how you've been seeing how, how things have been coming down since August um, and and what's going on here? Yeah, um, I remember. Don, I remember yes, I... you're on. By the way, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I remember when I heard about it. Um, 
it was kind of just really, really just confusing because I did get most of my, basically all my information from social media. So basically, like hearing all those different um, perspectives, hearing everything on Twitter and Facebook and things like that, it was kind of just like a, a ma massive, abundant chunk of information that I just received within probably like a half hour to an hour. So honestly, my initial reaction was just, uh, I guess I was just really confused more than anything because I didn't really know like where things were coming from, what things are true, what things are not true because you know things get things get thrown around and mixed up all the time, so you don't really you don't really know. So that was kind of my initial reaction. Hmm. That's a nice way to start, Kendra. Mm -hmm. What about you? I mean, and and that's that's in reference to the summertime before you came back to school. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Kendra, what about you? How did you start hearing about this? And um, well, it was just like the news, and when it happened, I agree with you. I was like totally confused. I didn't really know what was happening. I thought there was a lot of he said, she said, and um, I did. I did not think it would get blown up as big as it is now, and um, originally I was kind of thinking, um, oh, I forget the police officer who shot Michael Brown, but I was saying, hey, he's a police officer, and nobody actually saw it, but now that as the case has developed and there's been more cases like with um, Eric Garner, it's kind of all building up, and so it's, it, it, it Mm, it just keeps building up and up and on top of each other, and you can't think that this is part of a big thing. It is not. Um, it is related somehow where there is um, discrimination and kind of stereotyping. Yeah, I mean, I, that's why we're still talking about it, I guess. I mean, and still studying it, mm -hmm. because uh, this isn't going away. Right. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, Ariana, welcome. Hi. Sorry thank, it took so long. Thank, thank you. I always appreciate your persistence. <clears throat> so, you're you didn't give up. So welcome. Hi. Um, introduce yourself a little bit, but then keep talking. I mean, you were with us last week, but um, uh, DJ started us off by talking about his first impressions, how he first learned about uh, the Michael Brown shooting, and then. Kendra talked a little bit about how it didn't stop there. It kept going. But so what, what were your first impressions? How did you hear about it first? And then I'd, I'd like all of you to talk a little bit about um, what happened when you went to school. Um, but start with first, first impressions. Like, how did you learn about Well, I mean, I first learned about it, like, with the Zimmerman case a mm -hmm. couple years ago. That's when it first, like, kind of was brought to my attention. And then after that, like, it just, like, whenever I would hear anything, like, it would just catch my attention. And so that's where, like, it got the ball rolling for me. Mm -hmm. So Trayvon Martin sort of uh, raised your attention. And then, yeah. Yeah, cool. I mean, not, not cool, but yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. So... You came to school with all these impressions, all these he, he said, she said. Um, then what happened at school? Well, I mean, we didn't really talk about it at school, like, until really recently, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, we talked about it in my government class, but that was only, like, a couple weeks ago, and it was only like, one day. And then same thing with my lit class. So, I mean, I don't think we really, it didn't affect us too much. Like, it sounds really insensitive, but... I mean, it didn't. Yeah, I agree with you. Whenever we talked about it at school, it, it was never a big thing ever at our school because it didn't affect us. We didn't kind of associate it with our community. And mm -hmm. so only until it got so big and it's like all over the place, it's on social media, and then more people are getting more um, kind of involved with it. And so now it's, but now it's mostly discussions. It's not something that a whole lot of people are impassioned about. They kind of just follow and think about um, and discuss it with other people. Yeah, I, I definitely agree too. It, uh, it, it took probably like a couple weeks and then like that for us to really settle in and uh, talk about it. Um, because you know, obviously it's, you know, 
it's a new school year. You work on like getting people more comfortable, things like that, especially for freshmen. So it didn't, it it, it wasn't really like a first uh, an initial priority on our part to talk about it. Um, yeah, so I guess like a lot of other people, you know, probably like a month in, uh, just kind of went on with their lives. Um, for us specifically, I guess. So it was uh, it did it did take a while for us to to really sit down and, uh, and talk about it in our civics class or even uh, or even after school. Mm -hmm. um, just DJ, just shake your. Uh, I don't know where the mic is coming from, but every once in a while it's great, and then sometimes we lose you. I don't have a mic on my headphones. It's just so. That's good. Uh, yeah, so lean in, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> good. Yeah. All right. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me um, let me ask you this: Is this important, or are we stressing it too much? Is this like a big deal? Is this a change in history? Is this a tipping point in uh, in American culture? Um, and you know, yeah. Uh, I think it is. I think it's something that like we don't really hear about because like in history class, when you read the textbook, you don't really hear that much, like, you hear, like, the basic stuff, you know, like, segregation stuff, but it's, like, it wasn't only, like, black people, it was also, like, Latino people, and so, like, there's so much more that people don't really know about that, like, it's now, like, being brought to their attention, so I think, like, it's becoming, like, a big movement. Like, yeah. Yeah, I agree with uh, what you just said. Um, I do think this that this this is going to be more involved into the history books when the other ones weren't like as specific kind of. But um, I hope that this evolves into something else where um, they look more at reforming the police force because I do think that you know like Black Lives do matter, but this goes beyond like that because there have been breaking in police regulations where they're shooting white people like. Um, a couple of months ago, I think a white unarmed male was shot in the face. Um, I'm not sure. But that didn't get a whole lot of publicity. So I feel like they need to focus more on the police force in some areas. But this does matter. There is um, a stereotype, I and mean, I feel, where like police are going to be way more likely to um, draw their gun if they feel threatened by a black man or person than with a white person who is uh, potentially dangerous. Mm -hmm. And the, yeah, the um, definitely. It's I think. Uh oh. It's okay. He'll come back. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> the the case that Kendra's was referencing was in our area and affected one of her classmates because it was a. A uh, family member of one of her classmates, so that's the one she was referencing. Well, the, the person that she's referencing wasn't white, though. He was like, oh, well, Latino. Um, that's right. Yeah, he was Latino, right? Yeah. Mhm. Mm but so. he got shot in the face and wasn't. No one heard about it. Like it wasn't really on the news. Like yeah. didn't get any publicity. While only like. That's gonna sound bad. Like only like black people are getting shot. Like they're the only ones who are in the news when it's not just them. So yeah, it's Hello? like all minorities. You're back, DJ. Well, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so I, yeah, so where we where we are, I think, and I, I hate to summarize this, but um, you were about to jump in on the question of um, is it about police violence? Is it about you know? It is about Black Lives Matter, and does it go beyond that? Me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I definitely do think it, it goes beyond that. Like, of course, uh, Black Lives Matter, but um, more importantly, all lives matter. And I think that I think some 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 of the things that I talk about a lot with my peers or with my teachers is just the um, the humanity part. And it going beyond focusing on one group rather than rather than all you know all types of people as a whole. Um, it is about like I said, it, it is unfortunate. It does go beyond that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Deja, welcome um, back. Oh, make sure make sure you turn off the broadcast. Like of course, uh, Black Lives Matter. Do you you Deja, you seem to have 
broadcast on. So I think some, some, some of the things that I talk about a lot with my yeah, peers... her are, for a second until she does that, but then we'll bring her back. So, I, I look... <laughs> I, I, I want to I argue and, and see, see if you guys have heard the argument that um, Black Lives Matter is what this movement is about, right? And yeah. to, to, yes, there are other things, other intersections, other issues that are important, but, but it is, we're, we're talking about this because there were black men killed by police, mm -hmm. right? Um, that mm -hmm. is the issue. So, yeah. so distracting... I, so, so keeping the focus on that for a while feels like an important thing to do. And I was wondering okay. how you feel about that notion. When uh, could I jump in on that? Please, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. And um, and, and Deja, are you here now? Deja, can you talk? I think she's still muted. <laughs> no. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay, okay good. So jump in whatever you'd like. Deja's from um, Chicago also. Go ahead. Go ahead, so Ariana. I, I don't think it should just be, um, like, only Black Lives Matter. Like, it's kind of all minorities. Like, I think that it's kind of... It just sucks for, like, all the rest of people who are getting, like, mistreated by the police because, like, Latino people, they are still getting shot by police and, like, mistreated but they don't get nearly as much of the publicity as, like, black people are getting right now. And so I think it just sucks to single out one group and, like, only bring attention to them and say that only their lives matter and not, like, all the rest of people who are being shot because it's not just one single group that's being mistreated. It's, like, all the minorities. Can yeah. I kind of say something that... Um, I feel as though that the only reason African-Americans are getting more publicity about everything that's going on is because they're making noise. They're talking now. So it's like they're being heard. So like if more people in the Latino community were to come and protest and speak out about it, you guys would get hurt. That's just mm -hmm. how I feel about um, Yeah, I think you're right when you say that it's all about like rising up to that because so many people, there's such a awful background with uh, segregation and discrimination of black people that is more focused than uh, Latino people where they're actually in the, you know with the whole slave and um, so I think that goes in because it has such a deeper and more influential history um, mm -hmm. than those other minorities but and going on to what Paul said about how this movement right now is about black lives and black lives matter um, and I think we need to get over that like I'm hoping this evolves into something else like what Ariana said where there's going to be more um, concern with the other minority groups and also just like reforming police forces who are going through all these um, things where they're uh, killing people um, where with it was it was Eric Garner, wasn't it, where he was killed in the show cold and he yeah. couldn't breathe, that was him, so that was ridiculous and ugh. So I hope they like focus on the police force after this, not just like overall everyone. Our whole entire society is based on stereotyping. So everyone needs to root that out. Kind of like police force, because it's the police force who are doing these um, kind of these violations of protocol. Yeah, and I just want to add one more quick thing, Paul. Um, I think that the Black Lives Matter, um, like the hashtag or the or like the the movement, or I think it's a lot just um, a fuel of the moment. You know, I don't think I don't think it's necessarily to single out. You know, um, purposely to single out black people. I mean, obviously because these these big crimes have been done against black people. But I think um, I think it's not just specifically. Um, you know, let's forget every other minority. Let's forget every other race. I think it's just because of the the you know the hype of the moment and the um, just the emotions rallying up that it it called for some 
for like something to to be titled or like something to be um, you know something easy to be discussed about you know something easy to to like reflect on so something so conversations five ten years from now can be quickly referred back to oh the Black Lives Matter movement or the oh hashtag Black Lives Matter I think that's you know I think kind of going into the, going into the name and whether or not um, it's important to include all races like obviously that's important but I think it was just it was just as a reference rather I think it's more just reference rather than something that means more than that if that makes sense. Good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really clear. Other thoughts on this? Um, I agree with DJ saying, yeah. Say it your way, though. What do you What do you agree with? I mean, like, I don't, I don't know. Like, just the way things are going about as of now. Like, I understand. Okay, so I want to start by saying that every life matters. Yes, every life matters. But when you're calling attention to it. Like, as of like the every African American who has got an altercation with a police officer, their parents or people in their community have brought attention to it because they feel as though racism is coming back or whatever. I mean, that's not the case. But if it's like, if you're, I don't even know how to put it, but you're doing fine. Keep going. <laughs> it's like, um, hmm. How can I put it? Well, what, can I ask? What do you mean? It, it's not coming back, and and like, what do you mean? I don't, I don't think that racism is coming back. In, to be honest with you, that's just what I think. I think it's just people are being stereotyped, and I mean that never that never died. Like that's always it's always been there. But I just I don't think racism is coming back. I just think it's just the more the stereotype is like coming over more people, like more people are just seeing it. Like more people are just acting upon, oh, since he's African American, he must be a criminal, or he's African American, he must have did this, or this is a white police officer, he's all he's bad, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Going back to what DJ said, what you said how like Black Lives Matter is kind of, is, I'm gonna try and summarize what you said, and you tell me if this is right, where Black Lives Matter is kind of symbolizing. Um, that everyone's lives matter. It's not just um, like all minorities. Are you saying that when it um, this movement kind of sort of represents um, all minorities in awareness? Is that what you're saying before? Um, I personally, I don't. I'm not sure if Black Lives Matter, if that was the intention of Black Lives Matter to represent all minorities. But yeah, I feel let's like, start it, with like. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think if like. Let's say these. Um, let's say that the two victims were Hispanic. Would it be uh, Latino Lives Matter? Um, what's to say? What's to say? You know, due to the the dawn of of social media and hashtags and whatnot, what's to say that that wouldn't that that wouldn't be the hashtag? You know. So I think that it's that it goes beyond. It goes beyond a. Uh, oh, how oh, are we? Uh, it goes beyond a. Uh, a, a like, I think it's just I think it's just more of a reference rather than anything else. Okay. Yeah. Welcome, Lakeisha. Can you say hello? Are you there? Ray Misha, that's your. Is it? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Hi. Do you want to introduce hello. yourself? Say it again. Do you want to introduce yourself? Can you repeat the question? <laughs> Can you introduce yourself? You can't hear. No. Okay. So maybe you'll figure that out. I'll repeat it. So yeah, I was just asking you to say your name and 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 you're from Chicago, right? Yes. Okay. What's your name? Ray Nisha. Ray Nisha. Okay. Ray Nisha with an M. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, I, so uh, is this question? So let me ask. You, so another take on this, um, as as a as a white man, um, that I'll t that I'll throw out there is that maybe the movement is about white privilege, right? And thinking okay. about white racism. 
Um, and um, so, you know, Black Lives Matter has implies that too. Like, to what degree is this about white supremacy and understanding the sort of systemic? Yeah, I'm trying to hit on that too. The systemic things that that cause, you know, that, that end up with 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 a white cop killing, uh, you know, an African American, eighteen year old. Um, so I think that's an important part of this too. Um, just to say, I, mean, I am wondering though, um, as I say that, um, how we talk about this in school. Like, do we talk about it as Black Lives Matter? And you know, is that is that how you're talking about it in school, or how how are you talking about it in school? We're more talking about like what is right, what is wrong. Um, uh, kind of, we're looking at the morality of how these cases have been um, kind of conducted, and we found a lot of injustices, in it, especially in the Eric Garner case when we had proof that he was murdered on the street. But um, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. um, I don't think we're really looking at it like with like like by its name, like Black Lives Matter. We're kind of looking at it like case by case, like so. It's like the Eric Garner case, or it's like the Michael Brown case. It's not really like Black Lives Matter. That's not what. That's not how we're like looking at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, I, I agree with I agree with both of those points. I think that, uh, like you were saying, Paul, like it, it's. We try to be, or at least I try to be cautious about going on like, oh, it's the white men, and they're they're trying to kill, they're trying to kill off everybody because I know a ton of nice white people. I have white friends. <laughs> um, so it's, I think it goes like like you said, Ariana, it goes by case, and rather than just rather than just generalizing the racism and things like that. But, at the same time, it's important to, to be aware that, that these victims are are minority, are African American, and so like how we talk about it's kind of integrating all those things into one, and just really, you know, going down like we do root cause trees and things like that. So really going down to um, not necessarily the like the incident, but um, what what caused them? How did how did this incident come about? How did how did these stereotypes come about? Like where did it come from? I think so. Those are really like the, the subjects of our conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Ramisha, did I get the name right? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Do you do you want to introduce yourself a little more and so, say uh, say your just your your like. Your take on on Black Lives Matter and and everything that's going on. Yeah. Okay, so me personally, like far far as school, uh, yeah, I actually do think that we focus on more of Black Lives because, like, see, like saying back to what DJ said, like Eric Garner and Trayvon Martin or Mike Brown, all those are like you know Black people, so. I feel like we are, as a broad, it is focusing on black people saying that black lives do matter, although it was just those people. So me personally in school, yes, but around the world, no, I feel like they concentrated more on, like, you know, people dying rather than black lives. Well, that's only because, like, those are the ones that are getting, like, publicity. There's more cases, like, for like Hispanic people that aren't really getting the um, same publicity, like there's a um, case for like a man named Jose Sanchez who um, got murdered like by the police or shot or something happened that's like really similar to what's happening right now with all these cases, and they just didn't get the same publicity, and so I don't think it's only like Black Lives. Can I say right. one thing about that? Um. I think, okay, because it was an incident that happened in Chicago. I don't know if you're from Chicago, but it was an incident that happened um, in Chicago in Old Town, and a boy had got shot, and a police officer had got shot in the foot. His name is DeAndre. He lived on the north side of Chicago. Oh, and, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Right, and he had got shot by another gang member because he was gang-affiliated. I feel as though the news 
takes those stories because they want they want people more people to watch the show more want more people to watch the news so they put those cases out there so that they can see oh well this neighborhood has this or this is going on here so i mean if it's not like if it's in a, like a neighborhood where nothing really happens mm -hmm. and it's just it's just a coincidence that's where they're going to pull more they they're, they're going to push for more attention there like in that neighborhood nothing really happens well it it does, but it never goes to the news. That's because it's like, shush, don't tell, or no one's gonna say anything. So why bring attention to it? So so to to respond to Deja, um, just like the the Mario Bailey case that like recently happened this weekend. Mm -hmm. Does I feel like in school we can actually talk about that and relate it back to being like the movement Black Lives Matter because. Now this is they getting it to more of a point only because his parents, like his mother, is like it, it's another black boy who fell victim to this because it's gang stuff. Relating back to what Deja said, so yeah, like some some cases, like I feel like most cases in Chicago is more related back to gangs rather than Black Lives Matter with the movement. And I think I think I, I agree with you, Ramisha and Deja. I also think that it that the media. Um, like that, it's kind of like the system of the media too. Like they're kind of like the hot thing right now is Black Lives Matter. So the more the more tragic black stories um, that can be found are going to be put out there. You know, the next, the right, next, right, right, right. Either pro or anti, you know, of the of that movement. So I think the you know, media, and we talk about this a lot too, plays a crucial, crucial impact in. In the, in the arguments that are made, in the opinions that are being brought up between young people and older people. So it's kind of just like, it's kind of just like a big snowball hill. You know, getting, all the things that, that are, that are just like, in life. So it's, I think the media part is very, it's very crucial in that. I agree. Yeah. So, uh, what what implications does that have for what we could do in school around media? In school, mm -hmm. I see that um, people are really tied up with this type of like. Okay, so I think it starts at home, as it's like if you're in a, a type of you probably don't get the right the the right attention or you don't have the most money. It's like if you're in a probably lower than a middle class or a middle class home family and you don't get as much as someone else does. They try to get out to try to get more. Like like the like hmm, I don't wanna like put it towards a situation. It happened but um it happened with you know personally but if someone sees that you have more than what they have, they're going to try to get it because they want to have the same amount as you, or probably more. So they're going to try to do anything to try to get that. So what I'm trying to say is people harm other people, I think, because they see something that you have that they want, but you're not as going to give it up as fast as, I guess, they thought you were. So they're going to hurt you so they can get what they want. And that plays a big part in our schools because... We see people walking around with nice things, Jordans and whatnot, and other people might not be able to have that, and they want it. So they do anything in their will to try to get it. So that yeah. can play a part of why a lot of stuff is happening around, I guess, with you know black on black crime. That's what I'm talking about, black on black crime. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, responding to what Deja said and quoting Demaria Bailey's mom she said that she said they took away my loved one because they don't have love at home so relating back to what you said you said everything starts at home most of these things start at home it actually does because if if you lack you know respect or if you lack love at home then most likely you're gonna find it somewhere else like maybe not the right way but I mean, you will find it somewhere else, then that's the that's the leading cause of death to me. Ariana, you popped on there. Have you been thinking to say something, or? Um, 
No, I, okay. it's still, the thoughts are still coming. Okay. Cool. So, <laughs> you know what, um, one of the things, wait, one of the things that um, Don Reed, who's a teacher here, and, and I work on is a, is a site called youthvoices.net. And one of the assignments that, that uh, we put up there was a list of 25, and it was just the first 25 that I found, um, of incidents between police officers and African American men and women. Um, and then one of the things that we asked students to do in researching that is to, to write poems to kind of remember those people um, and, and to get to know the cases. But part of what happens when you read through those 25 is you, you think, oh my god, you know, this isn't just uh, this isn't just happening this summer. This has been happening for a while, and this is you know there's there's a pattern here. So, and and in New York, the the Akai Gurley incident, where there was a, um, a police officer in a public housing, um, and it, from everybody's from the police from his story. Um, it looks like he was holding a gun, going down steps that weren't weren't well lit, and um, he was opening the door with the same hand that he had the gun in, and the gun went off and it killed um, Gurley, right, young man, um, in his twenties. Um, and the point of bringing that story up, and then you have Tamir Rice, right, um, in, in in Cleveland. Um, so I'm just, I'm just like, I guess what I'm asking is, and and you guys are bringing, have been bringing up a case from Chicago, is that, um, and Ariana, say say the name of the person you mentioned as well, earlier, the, the Latino person. I think his name was Jose Sanchez, but I don't know. Okay. Because I don't remember. Right. So, uh, I, yeah, so I, I did, this is what I do. I'm sorry. I, I don't know if I have a question there, but I, but I think the question I was trying to ask is, <coughs> um, does looking at the pattern of these things um, push us out to look at, at again, more, more like, Things about the systems that we're we're living in, instead of the individual cases, um, and, and and but the instead of isn't quite right. I, it's like, <laughs> do you, does I anybody think, understand? Yeah, I think I think I'm just curious. I think um, yeah, I think it kind of just grows, you know, kind of and like branches out. Like obviously, it starts with the incident and what actually happened. We're trying to find proof to what actually. Happened. And then, you know, as time goes on, like, like you said, so Mike Brown, the Mike Brown incident happened in August. And so I think a lot of the conversations now have gone beyond, um, you know, especially after the no, the non-indictment have gone beyond, have just tried to, well, how, what can we do? You know, we're just talking about with the police system. Um, you know, Obama came out with a... DJ, uh, just lean into, lean into the yeah, mic a little more. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. Uh, so I, I was saying that it kind of branches, it, it branches out into, goes from the internet into uh, policies or things like or things of that nature, systematic, systematic things. Um, so I think that. Oh hi, um, <laughs> Dan. Yeah, I think it does go from, from internet and. and Longer it kind of longer it kind of exists, longer it kind of, it's being talked about, longer it's being thrown around. Uh, then the conversations can move into um, systems or maybe even solutions and things like that, or at least or at least um, those those questions being brought up. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ms. Van Heather, oh. well, welcome. Do you want to introduce <laughs> yourself? DJ. Hi. We can't hear you. Hi. No, it's a yeah. Go ahead. Oh, hi. My name is Heather Van, I'm a teacher at Al College Prep. You have some wonderful students here. Um, do you want do you want to talk Van. about? Do you want to talk about how you've been talking about these issues in school and 
what you've been thinking about a little bit? Introduce yourself a little um, more. Yeah. Yes. Let me. Hi. My sound is. I'm trying to figure this out. I've been trying to. Your figure sound it out is fine. Just talk. Go ahead. Yeah, we can hear you. Um. So, what was the question? How have you been talking about Black Lives Matter in school and or other issues around it? Well, it's been interesting because I think um, we started the school year off. A bunch of the teachers met to before classes started to figure out how we were going to address it, what we were going to do as a school, and um, we we set up an event and we publicized that we were really excited to have an after school sort of like peace circle discussion about what was going on and just find out what students were feeling and thinking and, and involve them in where we go and what we're going to be working on. And we didn't have many students show up. Um, we, In fact, I think we had one DJ. Do you remember? And um, so that, that really bothered us. And, and the students started talking about how generally the students in our school don't talk about issues very often. So it's really refreshing to see all of you finding people here uh, tonight. But, you know, generally students are not interested in engaging in that kind of discourse. And so we've been working on how to build that as a school to get them familiar with talking about issues and talking about issues. And I think that when it comes down to talking about Ferguson in my classes, the tough part has been students talking about things from their own point of view and their reactions to, you know, their own perception, but they're not focusing on educating themselves about what's going on around the country. And so this issue, when we're talking about Black Lives Matter, um, it's important to talk about black lives. And I think that a lot of our students have a very narrow lens if they're not black. And so that adds a level of complexity to our classroom discussions that is really been I'm grateful for, and it's enriching our discussions, but um, it's bringing out a whole new level of challenge that we're working on as a team, but um, excited to tackle. Mm -hmm. If I could just cut in, did you say that only you only focus on Black Lives Mattering? Like, that's it? No, I didn't say that. Oh, sorry. Well, but but you, I mean, just to just to put it out there, I mean, yeah, I mean, let's. I, I think this is hard. I think this is uh, knowing what it is that um, the discourse is is, is difficult um, because yeah. we we don't want to jump over. And I don't think anybody here is disagreeing with that. But mm -hmm. but I think you you did say that when you're not an African American, um, you do have. A, a more narrow lens, right? Mm -hmm. you said something like that. Just the fact that we have different lenses um, that we look through, given our experience and given our, you know, our race and class and, and so forth, that's a big that that's a big issue that's hard to talk about in school. Right? I mean, I think that's part mm -hmm. of it. But Ariana, how what was your reaction to that to, and to my sort of reframing it? I think. Um. I think it's true. Like, there's lots of different ways to view it. Um, I agree with that. But um, I just looked up the Jose Sanchez case, mm -hmm. and what had happened was um, the Jose Sanchez was a like labor worker, and him and his friend had gotten drunk behind like a mini market or something, and the next morning he was found dead and his friend was found like deep like or injured really badly and the police um, did an autopsy on his body but wouldn't release the information to his family so it's like stuff like that happens too and so like I mean I where know, was I, that? I was that I'm... in Michigan or? Uh, no it's um, it's in New York Shirley New York okay I think. So, so say more about, like, wanting to put this this story in, and it's exactly what we want you to do. We want you to say what you're thinking. How does how does emphasizing this story help you, like, make a point that you're trying to make? Well, I don't know if it's this story because now that I read it, it doesn't really 
it's not really going along with like um, police like doing anything to them. But like stories like this where police aren't giving all the information out to like the public or the family, I think that just like shows more of their um, like incompetence. Um, so I guess the question is, <laughs> how can we, how can, like, what what do you think we can be, should be, might be talking about in school? What kind of curriculum do you think we could be looking at that would get at some of the issues around Black Lives Matter while not silencing the other issues that are coming up around police corruption, around other lives mattering too? Um, I feel like Black Lives Matter is kind of just like an umbrella statement, so it's like all minority. But at the same time, while it is an umbrella statement, it kind of it's discrediting like um like all the rest of the people. But so I I don't know if it's like I don't know how to fix it, but or how to like modify it. But it's it's a blank statement that's kind of just like. It's bringing attention because, like, a lot of people are hooking on to that, but it's also, it's not, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. So, me? Yeah, go ahead. So, me, I think that, like, you know how you have to, like, find a theme for, like, an event or something. I feel like they came up with Black Lives Matter because, like you said, it was a pattern that, you know, so many black people was dying back to back that they... They was like, oh, we need to make a, you know, we need to have a solution for what's, what's been happening. Like, we can't continue to let this happen. So I feel like they came with, like, Black Lives Matter because so many black people have, have fall, fallen victim to, like, gun violence and stuff. So they tried to come up with something like, okay, Black Lives Matter, this can be the theme or this can be the name of the event because it fits it perfectly, you know? Mm -hmm. I think I'm going back to DJ, you keep trying. Okay. Shake, shake these things, bro. I think the mic's on your. Is this? Yes. Okay. It's like a lot of my hair. Um, <laughs> I think that, um, that having these discussions in classrooms, or at least having opportunities for these discussions, for these discussions in classrooms, are definitely important. Um, so classes like, like we have our civics class or we're at, or at the school with our with our social like student voice social justice committee. Well, I think that, that having more opportunities or even like hangouts like these can bring about uh, different topics and bring about different uh, different ideas. Like Ariana keeps going back to Hispanic lives and um, and I think that that's very important. Um, so just having these opportunities, like uh, constantly opening doors for for comfortable and and respectable conversation, I think that's very important. Yeah. yeah. Um. Don, did you want to jump in at any point here? Any thoughts? Um. I was just trying to wrap my head around the few things that people had said. One of the ways that. We've talked about it in my class as we've tied it to some of our curriculum. We're American Lit class, so we've, we've talked about it with studies of Native, Native American literature and oppression throughout time. But I also have heard you, you challenge our thinking in smart ways, Paul, to see that this is big enough and important enough to have conversations that we're talking about. What are the Did you want to jump in at any point here? Okay. Sorry. And, go ahead. Um, just, go. Okay, go ahead. And then I also wanted to. We are about five, five miles away from Michigan State, and at Michigan State right now, there's a movement called 6050, honoring some major civil rights movements in the anniversaries of them. And so we've also made some connections there, specifically with. Um, so I took a group of students from this class to hear Isabel Wilkerson and Soledad O'Brien. They came to the university, and they were talking about the Great Migration. And and so as we talk, so as we talk about all of this, there are a lot of 
issues and complexities that students have. Mm -hmm. Cool. Lucas, welcome. Uh, you'll have to unmute yourself. I'm trying to. How do we look at it in terms of what has happened? <laughs> okay, we're coming to go in here a little bit. Not sure. uh, thanks for your patience. Lucas, can you hear us? Yeah, I got you. There you go. <laughs> Jump in with your thoughts. You've been listening. Um, I don't know. This uh, um, there's been a lot said. Uh, I don't know exactly where I can jump in, um, but I, I can uh, relate to Ms. Van in terms of our classes at Alcott and trying to have these discussions. I mean, it's it's just there's so much to talk about. There's so much to uh, dive into, and there's so many ways in which to do it. Sometimes as a teacher, it becomes it has been really hard and complicated for me to try to figure out what angle it, it is that we can address these. This issue in particular, um, and especially with the movements going on now, it's like what ways can we, as as people, as students, get involved? Uh, how do we get informed so we get involved in the right way? Um, there's so much to talk about, and um, as a new teacher in particular, it's what's really kind of been a challenge for me to try to decide how do we how do we start addressing the issue, um, and that's kind of. Uh, that's been where I'm at right now. But uh, mm -hmm. I think it is so important to have these conversations because this is our lives. I mean, this is the, we, we deal with these types of issues all, every day, rather if we want to. Uh, I mean, whether we want to accept it or not, being white, black, Latino, um, these are the issues that, are, that really do affect us. I mean, people, people are getting killed. People are being oppressed. And we need to talk about this, these things. We need to have these conversations about it. Yeah, I totally uh, agree with what you're saying, Lucas, in that, like, there is, like, a lot of, to talk about and how it relates, but um, just from personal experience, this is what our class went through in discussion, where there was, like, that transition phase, where it's like, gee, am I allowed to say this? This might seem kind of sketchy. So, um... I think a lot of people are still going through that, where it's like, am I allowed to say, you know, personal experiences about how I might have seen this group as, um, like, I might have been participated in stereotyping. Um, but there is, it is something that needs to be addressed, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's finally becoming so popular, because a lot of people try to ignore it, like, it's, not, it's ugly, it's something we don't want to see, we don't want to look at, so we ignore it, and that's where all this Black Lives Matter coming up, so we can finally address it and face it, and it's it's working, it's going into our school systems, we're talking about it in our school, it's discussion, so there is all this awareness out, so um, I do agree with you when you say that, it needs to be discussed. It is being discussed. This is proof of that. Um, I don't think it was really ignored. I just don't think that the people who were getting oppressed were able to bring it to the attention of the public. Like, it's it's not always that easy to bring that to like the attention of people because you can get like backlash from like the police maybe in your town for like doing that. So I don't think it was really ignored. I just don't think it was able. It didn't have enough like momentum to be brought out. Oh, okay. And then also back to something that I think um, we were talking about earlier. I was I read a um, statistic that said one out of I think every black person is shot or incarcerated while well, one out of every 35 um, Latino person is like shot or incarcerated so like I mean I guess it isn't just like it's it is more like black people who are getting like um, oppressed like than Latino people so that's why it's probably like black lives matter more than like Hispanic or something. <laughs> I mean, I'll just say what I hope. I don't know if it's true, but I hope that 
Look, I, I was. Uh, let me say it this way. I did. I did participate a, l a little while in in the march in in uh, New York City on Saturday, and um, the signs that said "All Lives Matter" um, were an obvious distraction, right? So whether or not they intended it to be, that is what happened. <laughs> so at this at this moment in time, to say "All Lives Matter." is distracting from the other movement that's happening. And you have to wonder why you want to distract from that movement, right? Um, so, so my hope is that if when we focus on Black Lives Matter, we can then pivot pretty quickly to say, OK, yes, um, but it's not just men who are getting killed. It's also women. It's not just straight people who are getting killed. It's also trans. You know, it's it's not just, and it's also Latinos, and it's you know, and then and then um, the mention of, of Native Americans and the oppression that has happened, you know, for so long in our country. So, yeah, but but by focusing on the the the, the specificity of Black Lives Matter right now, I think it's easier to, to, to pivot and look at the other the other issues that come up. That's the hope. At least. But I, I mean, I'm, I'd really be interested to hear if anybody, as we're kind of closing out here, ha has anybody else thought about how you might get involved in any of these movements in any way? Um, Ray Misha and I were in the same physics class with Mr. Weisbecker as a teacher. And um, we were thinking about um, starting a little group because we had that. Um, well, my friend had gotten to uh, the contest with, uh, what was that? Soapbox? No, yeah, soapbox. And she had, um, like, we had heard a lot of stories, like yeah. a lot of you know, poems and pieces of, spe like, art, like, speeches. And, like, it kind of hit us because we can all, like, everyone related to a lot of things that the people were saying. So we wanted to start this group where it's, like, people who had, who were involved in, like, those little incidents or whatever, who, had, who know people who have got shot in group where we can start going to talk to other schools about what's going on so we can get other teenagers active into, into that little group that we want to start or whatever. And um, by, with that the help great. of Mr. Weisbecker or whoever mm -hmm. else wants to be involved. And then um, hopefully we can just probably start like um, like a, not like a boys and girls club type thing, but something close to that. So... <clears throat> Cool, and let me just let me just uh, promote for a second uh, youth voices. We'd love to have you uh, throw your poems up there too, and if you could. Um, but but did you say you're you're writing poems and and stories about things that have happened to you? Is that the idea of this? Well, so well, soapbox was um, basically your it's a free write on whatever you feel as though you want someone to be educated about. Got so it. like people some people pick like, Oh, I feel this littering is a problem, so let me let me speak my heart about it or um minimum wage or gun violence or stigma or like um anything that really just anything you care about. Mm hmm. So, mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts? Go ahead, DJ. Yeah, I Coming from like the church, um, and coming from like that environment, because I am like an active member of my church, and so that's yeah, like a lot of like the, the overarching theme of my of my arguments have basically been about the humanity part, and that's basically what I get from my environment. So um, like just last week, there were there were a lot of church church organizations that were going to going to march and. Like, Uh -huh. So I think, I, personally, I think I, 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 what I know, I, I'm personally capable of and I would like to be capable of like, participating. It's just having more of these talks. And it's just really um, kind of opening, opening that doors of conversation. Because I think, personally, I think that that's the, that's the best way to do uh, that. And then, uh, 
through those conversations could eventually be, could eventually come to an action. Uh, but yeah, um, it's more DJ. Of a yes, I'm sorry. We're only get we're only, we're not getting every word there, but um, okay. we we heard most of it though. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, that's okay. You just uh, we'll have to work that out next time you come on. Um, cool. Ariana, any final thoughts you have tonight? Um. I keep putting you on the spot. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just trying to wrap my head around everything because like I'd there are a lot of things that I haven't heard, so it's like it's kind of opening up my like view it's like it's I don't know I'm I'm just trying to like let all this new information like sink in because I hadn't heard of a lot of these cases or any of this and I don't know it's just it's a lot to take in so I'm still trying to like I don't know I'm, I just I don't know <laughs> no and you you I, I hadn't heard of uh, the Jose Sanchez case either so thank you for sharing that mm -hmm. yeah uh, Deja, any yeah. final thoughts? Or you, you already talked about the soapbox stuff. Yeah. Heather, you have any thoughts here tonight? As we, yeah. um, Thank you for gathering your students and organizing <laughs> this. Wow, well, they're awesome. Um, I, yeah, I guess what I keep thinking about is um, when I think about police and, and when we're talking about whether it's black lives or Latino lives or any lives, like what we're really talking about is uh, the police systems and the, and the issues that are facing our communities with how police are handling uh, any of their interactions. I think that I think that the issue that we're facing, at least in Chicago, is that the neighborhood and, and the focus on community is gone. And police don't know the the members of the community in which they're policing, mm -hmm. and so that leads to fear, judgment, you can call it even racism. Um, if you don't know, if you don't know the people, and you don't feel like a member of the community, then there's a whole host of issues that come along with it. And so, you know, I think that this is a really great step this discussion here and you know we have met students from all over the country or different cities uh, coming together to talk about this and they're seeing each other's perspective and 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 what they've experienced and as a teacher you know we often talk about how our you know Chicago when I when I hear Chicago please talk about my students they talk about students in a very different way that I talk about students and so we're one of the steps that we're taking as teachers is talking about how are we going to start forming opportunities for police, Chicago police and Chicago teachers to get together and talk about students in a new way and get them to start looking at our students in a different way because, you know, these cases we're talking about Ferguson and things like that are really, um, you know, uh, horrible, serious issues, but our students, you know, in a lot of neighborhoods in Chicago face, you know, have issues with police on a daily basis. And it changes yeah. the way they think about police. It changes the way they think about themselves. It changes the way they think about each other, and um, that's a whole other, you know, issue. No, hey, hey, look. I mean, that stories like that of teachers and police getting together and talking about young people, um, that that kind of dialogue is really exciting to hear. At least, even even if it's just imagined at this point, you know, making that happen is a, is amazing. Yeah. And I also think like young people having yeah. these opportunities as well to speak to the police and, and have those dialogues. It shouldn't just be teachers and, and police officers. It should be students as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's what we need to do. We need to start thinking about. Uh, <coughs> I mean, the next step I think is I mean once people are talking about this and having these conversations, it's like what what what's the next step? Let's act is that, on it. Uh, it's, it, I think so. I think acting on it is huge, but I think people need, we need to be informed. We need to, in order to come to a solution that is actually uh, uh, addressing a problem, I think we need to become informed. We need to have these discussions, what we're doing right now. I think that's a step in the right direction and, and, and think about uh, what would actually um, help. And I think what Ms. Van said, like just like 
even having these discussions, opening these dialogues, I think is, is an amazing way to uh, is, a, is a great step in that direction. So, well, um, I am going to close this one tonight. Um, that, uh, but um, Ramesha, Ramesha, did you have any final thoughts you'd like to jump in on? Here? Um, no, like pretty much like Deja like said what we were like going to do because I was going to talk upon that and Soapbox because like, I mean she explained Soapbox. Soapbox is where you take an issue, you know, you, you put it into a piece to make people care about it. So I feel like to get ourselves involved, like I, I would actually do something like that, or I would like join a movement that like it's like 15 movements in Chicago that's happening like right now. So yeah, so I would you just all only thing you have to do is go join the people outside, literally, to get involved. Yeah, well, th thank you for bringing us into your home there. <laughs> we got to hear a lot on there tonight. Uh, but yeah, thanks, and thanks for finding a, a quiet spot. Um, thank you all for joining us. Um, we do this every Wednesday. We're probably not going to do it, uh, you know, Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, but we'll be back after the New Year. Um, and uh, we are here at Teachers Teaching Teachers each Wednesday evening, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 o'clock there in Chicago, right? I think it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then Michigan, it's I think it's 9 o'clock. Right. Well, 9 9. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, well, whatever. We'll figure it out. Anyway, we um, have been doing this uh, several years um, it, uh, on the EdTech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network that was set up by Dave Fournier and Jeff Lebo. And thank you all for coming here tonight. And good evening. Thank you. 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 Thank you.